Welcome to St. John's Lutheran Church, Springfield, Ohio. Today is July 24th, 2016. Uh, this is our Christmas in July. We collect food for our food pantry. So uh, readings today will be Christmas related. Pastor Pollock is still recovering uh, from his rotator cuff surgery. We have a guest pastor, Pastor Seth Brid Bridger. St. John's is located at 27 North Wittenberg Avenue, Springfield, Ohio. Telephone number is 937-323-7508. We have a food pantry open on Wednesday. 9 to 1045. Thrift store open 930 to 1 Monday through Wednesday and Friday closed on Thursday. Rainbow table every Friday noon to 1 o'clock. Everyone's welcome to share in a meal. Greetings and good morning, good people of St. John's. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, good people of Springfield and Clark County. It's good to be with you. My name is Reverend Seth Bridger. I'm a called and ordained pastor in the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. And I'm delighted to be with you all this very morning. It was a pleasure to be with some of your congregation and the people of the community this morning at the drive-in movie theater. It was a little warm out there this morning. Thanks be to God for our air conditioning inside this gorgeous sanctuary. Yeah, my name is Seth, and uh, I'm no stranger to Springfield. I'm a Wittenberg grad of 1997. <coughs> Thankful and grateful for the education I received in four years on campus at Wittenberg. And quite possibly my claim to fame could be that I rode in a certain pastor's Cadillac <laughs> in the middle of the 90s. Pastor K uh, gave me a ride in his Cadillac. Thanks be to God for his ministry and his life. So it's with great honor and privilege. I guess I should also mention that uh, a former intern of yours, Dave Young, uh, from back in the middle 90s, is a good colleague of mine. And uh, my wife and I are both Lutheran and ordained past pastors, and we replaced uh, Pastor Dave down in Cincinnati. He left Gloria Day down in the west side of Cincinnati. Uh, he was an intern here uh, many years ago. But it is great to be with you all. It's a great day to um, celebrate Christmas. This is uh, Christmas in July, quite possibly the hottest Christmas <laughs> I've ever celebrated. But I invite you to stand for our gathering hymn, It Came Upon a Midnight
Connie Singleton will be doing the first Good reading. The first reading is from Isaiah 9th chapter. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. A thorny test rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this.
in the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself the people of his own, who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
creedal people have recited the creeds of faith, our affirmation of faith. This is what we believe as Christ bearers in this world. Please say this affirmation of faith together. We believe that God is the author of all life in heaven and on earth. We believe that Jesus Christ is the Lord of life. He died on the cross to defeat the power of death and to raise again to bring resurrection and life to all who trust in him. He lives and rules among us now and for all eternity. We believe the Spirit of God is alive among us, daily giving us new birth, filling us with grace and truth, and bringing us into one life with each other, in harmony with the whole creation. We praise God for life. Amen. You may be seated. Our special music today is provided by Lisa Harenko.
Glory be to God on high. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Christmas in July. When uh, I spoke with the folks in St. John's office this Wednesday, once it became clear that Pastor John, recovering from shoulder surgery, I understand it's his right shoulder, so we keep him in prayer this day for healing and wholeness. When it became apparent that he was not able to preach this day, they called up and, and uh, said, would you, Sister Sally from the Southern Ohio Synod, I don't know if you know Sister Sally, she's a gem, and she called up and said, Pastor Seth, are you free this, this Sunday? I need somebody down at St. John's in Springfield. I said, Springfield? <laughs> Absolutely. I would love to be there. I was so excited to come this morning. I drank 14 cups of coffee this morning before the drive the movie theater. And I was going so fast down the highway that I got pulled over by the State Highway Patrol. The State Highway Patrolman said, Young man, I said, Oh, thank you. Said, Young man, you were speeding. I'm going to give you two tickets. I said, Two? Not just one. He goes, I'm going to give you two tickets. I'm going to give you two tickets to the Reds game. Oh. And if you speed again in Clark County, I'll give you four tickets to make you go to the game. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> Thanks to God, I did not get pulled over for speeding this time, this one. But I was excited to be at the drive-in movie theater. 60 years of ministry. Something to be excited about and celebrate. And it's still going. That's the exciting part. And it's still... A wonderful way to connect with folks. And uh, it was warm out there, but it was wonderful to worship out there as it is to worship with the Speaker of Sanctuary. Now, I'm pleased to be here. Uh, you need to know a couple things about me. Whenever I supply preach, uh, I remember when I was a little boy growing up in Zion Lutheran Church in Worcester, Ohio, I always thought, who are these supply preachers? What about the God they believe in? And so, whenever I had the opportunity to supply, I always like to say a couple things you need to know about me. I love Jesus. That's the first thing you need to know. At a deep, uh, deep level, at an early age, I was baptized on the 2nd of February, 1975, February 2nd, 1975, as a one-month-old baby, and uh, baptized in the Lutheran Church, and uh, been part of the Lutheran tribe each and every day since. Grateful, thankful. You need to know that I uh, went to Wittenberg, and got a great education uh, on campus at Witt, and uh, four of the best years of my life, I met my wife there, uh, before she was my wife, and uh, we got married in Weaver Chapel, May of 2000. She's also an ordained Lutheran pastor of the church. She currently serves on Indian Lake at Galilee Lutheran Church uh, as an interim, and she just was named uh, Capital University campus pastor about a month ago. And so we live over in Columbus. We used to pastor a church together down in Cincinnati, Gloria Day Lutheran Church on the west side of Cincinnati. About 40% of that Lutheran congregation are former Catholics. That's the mission field down in Cincinnati. Uh, lots of uh, Roman Catholic folks down in Cincinnati. And a uh, great ministry there on the west side of Cincinnati. And uh, we weren't looking to make a move, but um, I got a phone call last winter from Trinity Lutheran Seminary over in Columbus, next to Capitol. And it was the vice president of Trinity, uh, Brad Gee. And he asked me if I would consider uh, serving at the seminary as the director of admissions. So I, uh, for the last 16 months, have served as the recruiter and, and director of admissions over Trinity Lutheran Seminary, uh, looking for the next great church organists and musicians the next great youth workers, and yes, even the next great ordained pastors in our church. And I shared with you that uh, uh, the quality of applicants uh, is, is high, uh, but we need more. The quantity simply is not there. So there's a clergy shortage, and it's growing. We have a lot of retirements coming in the church, and it's a, it's a real issue. And so for such a time as this, I felt called, uh, and it is a calling to, to serve uh, as a recruiter uh, for future church leaders. Um, for such a time as this, but uh, the need is great. And this congregation has been uh, part of growing leaders uh, over the years. Uh, uh, many, many interns, I don't know how many, some of you may know, have uh, been uh, trained up here in part. Another connection that I have uh, with your congregation is an intern that you, you all um, helped um, uh, raise up and train up um, in, uh, in about 2004, 2005. Does anybody remember Amy Fouquet, Pastor Fouquet? Um, and she died of, of cancer uh, several years ago uh, while she was serving with Shepherd here in, in Springfield. But her daughter, Gracie, is uh, my wife and I's goddaughter. And so uh, I was thinking of, of Amy Fouquet uh, and her family on the way down here this morning, definitely. But it is so great to be with you um, uh, for this uh, uh, Christmas in July um, and for this day to 
together. So, uh, some, some, this is when the sermon really begins. Everything else was just a bonus. Uh, they, they said to preach for about 50, 60 minutes uh, here at St. John's. Uh, that's okay. That's okay. Uh, can't see your lunch plans. Uh, but no, uh, joy to the world. Joy to the world. Uh, these texts, these marvelous texts that you read so well and, and that we have before us, uh, speak to joy uh, in this world. And it's great to sing uh, Christmas uh, and Nativity and Advent hymns together uh, this morning. The world needs uh, uh, something to celebrate. Uh, I come to you this morning as a Jesus lover who is a troubled pastor. I'm troubled. I'm deeply, deeply troubled uh, by the events uh, that are uh, all around us. Uh, scripture says, be in the world and not of it. Uh, but that's hard some days. You, you, you can barely uh, uh, turn on the news or pick up the paper uh, or look at your smartphone and something else has happened tragically in this world. Now, being a student of history and, and being students of history, we know that, that things have, have happened uh, throughout, throughout millennia. Uh, but something particular is going on in our world, in our country. Uh, a lot of angry people, friends. A lot of angry people. A lot of folks on short fuses. And um, it's trouble. Case in point, Greg, you don't know this, we worshiped together in the movie theater, and then uh, I had a little bit of time uh, uh, to go. Uh, uh, I, I drove around memory lane, uh, around Springfield, but I also stopped at Tim Hortons out on, on East Main Street. And uh, I, had, I didn't have enough coffee before the service, so I had to get another cup of coffee. And I was sitting in Tim Hortons in our beloved city, and uh, everything was going well. And there was a lot of people coming and going, and the staff, there were about 10 people working. Wow, you know, they, they were crowded and busy. And then a young man uh, came in, probably in his 20s, maybe in his 30s, and he seemed agitated. And uh, I just noticed him, and I, was, I had my back to him, and I heard him start to talk, and the words he was choosing to use weren't necessarily the, the, the best words. And, there were families in Tim Hortons this morning, and, and uh, people of all ages, and, and I just noticed him, and, and uh, he went back outside, and there were a couple people following him. And uh, so I got up from my booth, and I went over the window there at Tim Hortons, and I looked out, and uh, I saw uh, five young men in a pickup truck with a dog, uh, taking off their shirts uh, and their flip-flops, and they were about ready to fight another gentleman in another car. Uh, and uh, you could see this sort of escalating, and so, I was in the right place at the right time uh, to tell the Tim Hortons staff who was busy helping customers that we need to call the, the Springfield police. Uh, please call right now. And uh, you know, when you get into these situations, you don't know how much to be involved. You just don't know how much to, to sort of stick your head out there. Um, in this case, to stick your head out the door. Um, and I had my collar on, um, and uh, slowly but surely I walked outside, and they were still a ways away in the parking lot, but yelling at each other and uh, about ready to fight in the grass outside the parking lot. And, and uh, I just said, you're better than this. Guys, 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 guys. Said, the police are on the way. Please, please, knock it off. Get out of here. And uh, uh, five on one, um, it could have been really, uh, really ugly. Uh, but that happened in a moment. Apparently, the guys in the truck got out and they nicked the car that the other guy was in. And he drove a pretty nice car, and so he was upset. Uh, and he yelled at them, and they yelled back, and then before he knew it, they were about to get a rumble right there on East Main Street. Thankfully, Springfield's police showed up, and uh, they were on their way. Uh, the two cars pulled off, nothing happened, uh, and thankfully, uh, it was, was avoided. But uh, an example right there of how angry our world is, um, and how quickly uh, things escalate. And so in the midst of that, we have these texts, and we have this opportunity to focus on the little bitty baby that came into the world to change the world. Jesus is Name literally means to save this world. Names are important. Names are important. And Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus, Jesus Messiah, came to save you and me and those guys in the blue pickup truck and that other guy who almost got his, you know what, kicked. Um, what is going on in this world? And so I share with you that I'm a troubled pastor, but I want to uh, lift up to you the gospel good news and, and see some rays of hope. Uh, to focus this morning on the goodness of God in light of the things of the world. There's a wonderful theologian uh, who has passed on that said, we read the Bible in one hand and the newspaper in the other. And we try to make sense of this world. 
for Christ's sake, for God's sake, what was going on. So we focus on the goodness of God, the goodness of God's redemptive acts. And wait in hope. You and I live as expecting people. Those of us that are baptized into the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Triune God, those of us that live as Christ followers, we're called to be expectant. Jesus is coming back. I don't know when. I hope it's during my lifetime. It'll probably be right after I save enough money to buy one of those cars at Bershaw's down the way. Jesus will come back. <laughs> but we're supposed to live expectant, looking for the goodness of God and the goodness of God's redemptive acts to live as hopeful people, but it's, it's difficult. It takes some skill to see what's going on, to make sense of it all. Last night I was up at Indian Lake. Every year they have a fundraiser for the Indian Lake Watershed and for the music department at Indian Lake High School. Were any of you there at the Nashville Hitmakers last night? Any of you country music fans or folk fans? This is the fifth year, and I'm gonna do a little free promotion for this event because I went for the first time last night and it was marvelous for five hours. It started at 7 p.m. And these Nashville songwriters played their own music and songs that they had written and other people had performed for five hours. And it was so beautiful to turn off my cell phone <coughs> and to sit there with my wife on a date with some of her congregation members raising good money for the watershed. The Indian Lake watershed is healthy because of some of the great collaborative work they're doing up there. If I'm not mistaken, their watershed affects our watershed because we're downstream. <coughs> but for five hours to listen to, to wonderful song, song, song making by Evan Stevens, who's from the Indian Lake area, and Matt Davis, who wrote a couple songs for uh, a guy named Elvis, and Ashley Cleveland, a, a recording artist, and Mike Lauderbelt, who's a wonderful guitarist, Wynn Varble and Mike Reed, who used to play for the Cincinnati Bengals. He was a defensive end in the 70s. He's a musician and songwriter now. Just marvelous to turn off the phone and to enjoy five hours of music. Where am I going with this? In these troubling days, I'm trying to listen to more music. I'm trying to listen to more music, to turn off the noise of this world and to focus something that gives me joy. I don't know what it is that gives you joy, whether it's playing golf or sitting with a friend or drinking a cup of coffee or traveling. I don't know what gives you joy. Date nights with your spouse, getting together with your friends. I don't know what gives you joy, whether it's reading scripture or getting together with your friends in church. I don't know what gives you joy, but I would encourage you to do in these days some things to take your mind off the troubles of this world, not one of us individually can change the course, I believe. Who am I, we say? Sure, there's been standouts in this world that by a word or for such a time as this have changed the course of history. I believe that can still happen. But I think God's working through the community. I think this is a great time to be the church. I think this is an incredible time for you and I to be in the church, to put up another story, to change the narrative about what is going on for Christ's sake in this world, to bring people together in safety, to bring joy into this world, to do what we can collectively, and sometimes even individually, to make a difference in this world. There's 153 days until Christmas Eve. You can check me on that. I counted it up. I done did study at Wittenberg, but I didn't study mathematics. But I think there's 153 days until Christmas Eve. And as we live those days, we look for a new day. We look for God's redemptive work in this world. That came into the world as a little bitty baby. Thankfully, that little bitty baby didn't stay a little bitty baby, but that little bitty baby began to live and breathe and walk and talk and teach and change this world to redeem the woman at the well, to redeem <coughs> those that were cast aside by society and oppressed, to make new life for you and for I. He died so that we may live. Christ lived and Christ died. Thanks be to God and that tomb is empty. And that gives us everything we need, friends, to live a hopeful life.
day in and day out, to do and respond to the gift of God as we're able. I encourage you to stay focused. Stay focused as a, people, as a person and as a, as a people on the goodness and the redemptive acts of God. I don't know how it's all going to turn out, but I trust in the one who created us and set us free. I trust in the one who gives us life and breath. I trust in the one that we say glory to be God in the highest. To bring good news to this city. To bring good news to this community. In Christ's name, joy to the world. Joy to the world. As we try to make sense and wait for the blessed hope that we hear about in Scripture. Thanks be to God, the scriptures don't call us to be perfect. You ever thought about that? The scriptures, all 66 books of the Bible, 39 of the Old Testament, 27 of the New Testament, the Old and New Testament combined give us a, a picture of, of God's faithful people. Or people trying to be faithful to God. We're called to be faithful, not perfect. That's good news, isn't it? That's good news and grace to you and to me. Respond with faith and try to help this world, this weary, weary world, in search of a Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today are John and Karen Dietrich. They will be taking up the offering.
I invite you to stand as we pray together with hopefulness and joy in this day. It's a privilege to pray together. As we celebrate the mystery of the Word made flesh, let us place our needs before the Creator of heaven and earth. Lord Jesus, let us pray that we will eagerly welcome the dawn of God's justice and peace in Christ Jesus our Savior. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our children, that they will always be guided in life by the light of Christ's word and holy supper. We pray for those that are expecting, those that are soon to give birth, those that hope and long to give birth, and those newborn mothers and fathers and babies. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the poor and the powerless people of this world, that they will be welcomed at the manger of the Lord and know God's great love. Lord, we pray for those that are struggling this day. Lord, I pray for those young men and uh, its importance. I pray for violence in this world, both near and far. Lord, your will be done. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those ignored by society, like that shepherd, like the shepherds. They will hear the good news of Christ and discover in Jesus the eternal dignity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those dwell in the shadows of death and all who suffer, especially those we know right now are struggling or close to death. Lord, we pray that they will receive Christ's unfailing light and abiding mercy. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Lord, prayer. prayer. Lord God, we pray for Pastor John. We pray for his healing and his wholeness and his well-being. Thanks for his leadership for many years in this place. Thank you for his, his uh, gift of pastoring. Lord, Continue to inspire this congregation to do creative and innovative things to connect and to share the gospel good news. Lord, we pray for the school children of Clark County. Lord, we pray for safe summers. We pray for schools that will begin sooner than we realize. Lord, we pray for our own preschool here at St. John's. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We had other petitions, both spoken and loud now. Lord, your God that's so good, you're open to prayer, we pray now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our Lord. prayer. Receive our prayers, both spoken and unspoken, gracious God, and fill us with that hope, the hope that informs and guides us each and every day. As we behold your presence among us, in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And God taught us to pray with these words known as the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hear this benediction, this blessing, as we go back out in the world that God so deeply loves. Hear this benediction this day. May the love of the Lord Jesus draw us to God's self. May the power of the Lord Jesus strengthen us in service. May the joy of the Lord fill us and fill our souls. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and always. We sing our closing hymn, one of my favorites, Good Christian Friends Rejoice.
Flowers today at the altar were given in by Helen Walsh in memory of her mother's birthday. Again, I would like to remind people of our food pantry every Wednesday, 9 to 1045, the outreach store. Hours uh, 9.30 to 1, open Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday, and closed on Thursday. Rainbow Table, every Friday, noon to 1, everyone is welcome to share a meal. Uh, this week's Clark County Fair, we're located in the Mercantile Building, uh, with information about the ministries here at St. John's. Stop by and see us. Uh, to members out there, uh, August 14th on Sunday is our annual uh, St. John's Picnic. St. John's is located at 27 North Wittenberg Avenue, Springfield, Ohio. Our telephone number is 937 323 -7508. We're taking applications for preschool and pre-K. Call church, the school office at 937-325-4311 for more information. Go in Christ. Good day.